Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. Today, I'm gonna to solve a problem. I've got an awful lot of this Indian sandstone paving all around my house, which looks really nice, but where it meets the drive, if a car touches it, the car always wins. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to replace a paving slab. This is a 600 by 600 paver and I'm lucky enough to have a replacement exactly the same size that I've reclaimed from another part of the garden. Now there's two ways of taking this out. There's the obvious way which is getting a sledgehammer and start working on it until it's broken up into small bits and take it out. That's okay as long as you don't damage the pavers around it or even if you don't damage the pavers you don't loosen the foundations so although this is out all the foundations are a bit wibbly wobbly all the pavers around are starting to move so that's quite a risky process but because I want to use as much of this as possible I'm going to cut it down in the future and at least use a half of this paver I want to get it out in one piece so what I'm going to do is used a stitch drilling technique and stitch drilling is drilling a series of holes with a masonry bit all the way around the perimeter and if you drill enough holes they start joining up and eventually we get to a point where the foundation for this paver is completely separate to those around it and with a bit of luck we'll be able to pull this out in one piece. I suppose to be fair there is a third way of removing these and that is using a large disc cutter with a stone blade which I haven't got and I don't think many other DIYers would own one either. So I started by removing as much grout as I could by hand just to see what I've got. To do the stitch drilling you can use any drill that's got a hammer action on it. I could use my cordless DeWalt but I'd be running through the batteries fairly quickly. I think the best drill to use is an SGS drill like my Titan here but just because some people say Stuart you've got all the tools and that's what makes it easy. I'm not going to make it easy today. I'm actually going to be using my 1990s Black and Decker. For the choice of drill bit it's best that you use the largest one you have that fits into the joint but with a few millimetres of play so it doesn't damage the paver on either side. I must say it's been a very long time since I chucked a bit into a drill with a key like this. For jobs like this it's not only important to use PPE for the obvious reasons but as I'm going to be drilling for some time I found that it really helps to be able to concentrate on the job if I've got some good ear protection in and I'm not worried about pieces of concrete going into my eyes. I start by drilling a series of vertical holes around about 30 or 40 millimetres apart and then start joining them up using diagonal drilling which then starts to also open up small stretches of fully removed bedding which is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. As the joint was getting smaller I swapped to my smaller 6mm bit which although works in the same way it does take longer as you obviously need to drill more holes. So I've drilled all around the perimeter as deep as this masonry bit will allow me and I've tried to scrape it out the best I can with this rubbish old screwdriver that someone left in my house once upon a time. So it should be fairly debonded but I'm sure there's going to be some areas that are still well connected. So I'm going to try to get a pickaxe underneath it and crack the rest of that and then really in theory this should just come out. That didn't happen in practice and I could feel the adjacent paver wanting to rise. 
So I went back to cutting out some more mortar to try to make sure the two were fully separated. Right. Let's try this again, shall we? Yeah. Here I have the benefit of a free edge in this case, which makes it easier to get a pickaxe underneath to raise it. But if your slab is fully surrounded on each side by other slabs, then I think you'll need to drill an additional row of holes down the centre of the slab and split it in two to help remove it without damaging the others around. So, that came out easier and quicker than I thought, so I'm pleased with that. I'm just having a look at what's underneath it. There's not that much Type 1 or foundation, so I think I'm going to leave it like that because all of these are going to be the same. So I don't want to suddenly, suddenly put a really good foundation here with everyone else being a little bit thinner. So all I'm going to do is tidy this up, prepare this, mix up some sand and cement and see if I can get that one nicely bedded back in. The only slight change I made was to increase the thickness of the mortar on the free edge. So the new slab has some added protection just in case a car drives up onto it. So I've come across a little bit of a problem here, just tidying this up. I've got concrete that's just come out from underneath the adjacent slab and it's all a little bit ragged and actually a complete lack of foundation. So actually when I put concrete on here, I think the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got plenty of support under there, else one day this is going to break as well. One tool I've had for many years and comes out regularly and has easily paid for itself many times over is my hand compactor, sometimes called a rammer or a tarmac tamper. On a small area like this, where a plate compactor is obviously just too big, it's excellent for compacting the ground and does a far better job than using the end of a piece of 4x2. I measure the hole to fill and calculate that I need around about 19 litres of mortar. I use one bag of sharp sand, which I know is around 13 litres in volume, and make up the rest with some building or soft sand, which will give the mix a little bit more workability. I'm aiming for a six to one sand cement mix. I also mix some cement slurry to coat the back of the paver with to help bond it to the mortar. Adding SBR additive here, which is a little bit like PVA, is also a really good idea if you've got some, as it really helps with adhesion and to make the slurry waterproof. However, I don't have any in my store, and as all of my other slabs have clearly not been slurry primed, there's a little point in spending around £20 on a tub of SBR just for one slab. I mixed the mortar fairly dry and started by forcing as much as I could underneath the adjacent slab, just to make sure that I don't have a future problem there. I roughly level the rest of the mortar and dry fit the slab just to see how much more material I need to place. It was around 5mm low on one side and about there on the other, so I top it up on the low side and coat the slab back with slurry before placing it in position permanently.
You'll notice here I've just made some trowel marks on the mortar which will help me adjust the level of the slab as I bed it down with a rubber mallet. In this sort of situation, a simple straight edge easily shows how the slab is doing for level relative to those around it. I finish by making sure the front edge is fully supported with bedding material and then give all the slabs a light wash just to make sure that I haven't left any mortar or cement behind that could stain the slabs in the future. Two days have now passed, so the slab is just about fully cured and it's not wobbling anywhere, it's still in the right position, so I'm happy with that. Now, if this was the only slab I was putting in, I would now grout round the perimeter using the same type of mix as I use for the bedding mortar, but a fairly dry mix so I could just finish it off with something half round, like a broom handle or the handle of a bucket. But I'm not going to do that at the moment because I've got some more slabs to lay at the bottom of this fence here that I've just finished. So I'm going to wait until they're all complete, then I'm going to grout all of them using some polymetric resin, which is not a product I've used before. So if you're interested in seeing that, come back in a couple of weeks' time to see how I got on. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. And if you haven't enjoyed the video, why are you still watching after 12 minutes? Life's too short. So with that being said, I'll see you next time.